Joining us now to break down the day's hearing is Lieutenant Stephen Rogers, a retired military intelligence officer, FBI National Joint Terrorism Task Force member, and an advisory board member of the 2020 Trump campaign. So, Lieutenant, when we look at exactly what this hearing was all about, I mean, I think that the contrast was very evident very early on, but I do want to get your response to exactly what you saw. What did you make of Attorney General Barr's hearing? Well, to begin with, when I was a child, my parents used to take me to Barnum and Bailey Circus when they came into Brooklyn. So we don't need to go there anymore. This is what this reminded me of. Look, Attorney General Barr did a magnificent job. He stood his ground. He was not intimidated. He answered every question. And I, I, I love the part when he said to one of the Congress women, I believe it was, uh, every time he was being interrupted, he said, I thought this was a hearing. You're supposed to be hearing me. So he was very, very strong and tough. He did a great job. And, you know, he does seem to be very prepared for these moments. And I remember when he came before, I believe it was the Senate Judiciary Committee as, as well, after the Mueller hearing, uh, or the Mueller report, I should say, he was prepared for that as well. I mean, he always comes uh, ready with his stance. He knows his arguments. And I don't know if I can necessarily the, say the same about the House Judiciary Committee chairman, Jerry Nadler. It seems like whether it was Robert Mueller, whether, whether it was Attorney General Barr, whether it was Corey Lewandowski, he just doesn't have a hold on these hearings necessarily in the same way, because the one that that we saw today was rather chaotic, contentious. I don't think that much came out of it. In fact, I don't think we'll be talking about this hearing by the end of the week. What did you make of the Democrats' performance? Well, I'll tell you what came out of it was the fact that the American people were able to see, as you so articulately just said, the attorney general in action, not just giving political rhetoric, but knowing his subject, answering back a legal term from legal term. The Democrats, well, I'll tell you what, it's the Democrat lawyer who led the impeachment process for the Democrats who actually said in a, in a statement after these hearings uh, had continued to go on that Jerry Nadler's performance was poor. He actually said that it was ineffective. So uh, the attorney general was addressing the issues at hand, which are what? The violence in our streets, uh, the, the, the Russia collusion hoax and on and on and on. And the Democrats seem to be more going down a road of trying to prosecute Look like a courtroom, for goodness sakes, trying to prosecute the AG, and they just utterly failed. And I'm trying to look at this through an objective lens, too, because I think you're right about the Jerry Nadler thing. I mean, it just wasn't an effective argument in order to even try to get the sound bites, because I know that's what these hearings are about. They just want to get their sound bites a lot of the time. They know that the American people aren't necessarily watching three hours of the attorney general coming in and answering these kind of insider baseball type of questions. But I don't think that the Democratic led panel was even successful at getting that big sound bite that they wanted or anything like that, trying to use it as a campaign ad, which we know will be their efforts somewhere down the the road. And then on the Republican side, I have to give uh, credit to ranking member Jim Jordan as well. I mean, what he does there, it is performative in a way, but he is very effective at getting his argument across, getting his narrative across, and to an extent, making Attorney General seem as if he was the victim to some degree being up there, because Attorney General Barr was standing up for police, he was standing up for order, and he was putting the Democrat panel in a position where they had to oppose what he was saying. What did you make of the Republican response? Well, look, you just provided a great contrast between Jim Jordan and Jerry Nadler, where Nadler is rambling on, going nowhere. Jim Jordan had that videos. Mm -hmm. I mean, look, he put those videos up there. You can't argue with what you're seeing. And uh, was it Nadler that said this is a myth? And uh, Jordan shows these videos of violence, uh, of, of uh, CNN, for example, uh, playing uh, the so-called myth, the peaceful demonstration. So uh, the performance of the Republicans was excellent because they came with videos, they came with pictures, they came with facts. Performance of the Democrats is as usual, dog and pony show. And I think that's an excellent point because it's such a strange time that we're living in right now. In uh, the Democrats' effort to be so anti-Trump, they're forcing themselves to take positions that no reasonable person really agrees with. I mean, nobody looks at what's going on in Portland and says, you know what? I'm okay with that coming into my community. They want law, they want order, they want there to be peace on their streets, but because they're so much against the president, they're being put in this situation where they want to oppose federal intervention and at the same time supporting these rioters who are trying to burn down a courthouse. It's a very interesting time to be in. So where do we go from here? What is the future of law enforcement after this? Is this a debate that continues going into November? The debate will continue only because the Democrat socialists want it to continue. But after what we saw today, and we might see more of this, I believe law enforcement is strengthened, both from within the ranks and without. They now know without a doubt that there are people in government, namely the Republicans and the president and the Department of Justice, that are watching their backs. And let me add this. 
I think a lot of Democrats are scratching their heads over what they saw today, because what they saw, as you just so you know, excellently uh, articulated, is a party falling apart, grasping at straws to do anything to embarrass this president and to embarrass the Republican Party. Whereas you had, and you used this term and you did it well, I'm glad I heard it, you used the term reasonable. What is reasonable in anyone's mind is what we saw the attorney general state before the Democrats in this hearing, and that is to protect the people. And it's interesting, too, to see the different uh, Congress people, how they're responding to this situation, because you see, notice the ones in more moderate districts, they're trying to stay away from this a little bit more, whereas the ones who come from a little bit more left-leaning, a little bit more progressive districts, they are willing to take on this issue a little bit more head-on, the issue of defunding the police, Attorney General Barr, things of that nature. But when it comes to these swing districts, you notice that the Congress people are trying to avoid this topic altogether because they know how vile it is to defend what is happening in the city of Portland. But Lieutenant Steve Rogers, Rogers, I appreciate you coming on tonight, breaking down this issue for us and the hearing that arrived on Capitol Hill. Thank you. And coming up next, I keep.